Uh, if you were in church last Sunday, you understood through the lessons and especially the colic, which we offer again today, that liturgically we turn. Um, we are heading toward Advent, headlong, in fact. And therefore, actually the strongest verses about the return of Jesus from the mouth of Jesus are actually in these lessons before Advent Sunday 1. And the challenge comes right out of the collect. It describes a way of life. In other words, in the answer to the question, how shall we live, the writer of the collect would say, well, if we are being made children of God and heirs of eternal life, how shall we live is, having this hope, we may purify ourselves even as he is pure. Well, that's no small thing. That's, that's, that's its, own, its own enormous kind of direction. The good news is that God really wants to continue to change us and make us more like him. And he will create circumstances that challenge our assumptions that may or may not line up with what it is that God wants to do, what kingdom values look like, and even who God himself is. That's what we actually see in the epistle lesson of Philemon. Um, Philemon is a slave owner. And Paul very gently in talking about Philemon's slave Onesimus is trying to literally upturn Philemon's understanding of what human chattel is. By says, you know, before he came to me, he was useless. No, 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 I bought him. I mean, I can sort of hear Philemon arguing back. Um, but now he is of value both to you and to me. Why? Because he's a brother. He's been brought to Christ. Is it possible for chattel to become valued human? You see, to describe someone in that position as valued human goes to the very heart of the entire slave system. Because the argument, and I heard it even as a child, when they would describe the place of African Americans was, they really aren't as human as we are. Mm -hmm. And therefore that justified the kind of segregation system that was normal life until maybe 40 or 50 years ago. So what God is doing in this passage is giving us an example of how God is using Paul to literally challenge another Christian in a value that he holds that has nothing to do with the gospel. In fact, is entirely contrary to the gospel. And if we are going to commit ourselves to live a life where we are being purified as he is pure, and to be, be, in essence, say yes to that, you can bet that God will use his Holy Spirit and other believers as his channels to challenge us in those places where our values don't represent the values of the kingdom. Where our understanding, whether it be of God or of humanity, is different from what we actually see in the scriptures themselves. Because the only way that can happen is to be in the kind of moment that is described in Philemon where somebody gets brought up short and out of that we have to look at something that we just either haven't paid attention to or just would rather not see. Uh, one of the bylines that comes out of the story of William Wilberforce, who was a champion against slavery, was that when the slave boats came in, that was a part of what changed his heart because of what he saw. And the comedy says is, once you've seen, you can never act like you have not seen again. Mm -hmm. And in essence, that's a very, that becomes very personal. In other words, God brings moments of revelation to us, some of which we would rather not see. But having seen, we can no longer say, hey, we didn't see, we didn't know. We're pleading ignorance. And God is not doing that because what he's trying to do is continue to make us feel bad. No, no, what he's actually trying to do is call us into a new place where more of our life is in fact yielded to his authority and to his glory so that we might serve him and in fact begin to be made more like him. Because the whole process of what God is doing in the lives of his children is to change us more and more into his image to give us the family likeness, as it were, 
so that we, in fact, do look in the way we live like children of God. Will there be a gap between what we see in Jesus and what we see in us? Well, yeah, that's sort of like stating the obvious. Of course. And so our place of rest comes actually out of the psalm for today. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help. Now that's intentional. Because the story of Jacob was he deserved nothing. Mm. He was a schemer. Mm. He did everything he could. Remember tricking Esau out of his birthright, being challenged by the angel in the middle of the wilderness, and yet God blessed him. And out of his own progeny came the nation of Israel. Now, to say, therefore, happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help is to understand that God knows who we really are. He knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust, as it says in the Old Testament. And therefore, there's no effort on our part somehow to qualify, to be made worthy, to somehow have the capacity, to use contemporary language, to be able to receive. God is the one who is taking the initiative who's breaking in to show us the things that we need to see, to work the changes in our lives, and to give us flat out what we never, in fact, actually deserve, but what he and his great love continues to want to pour out, both within, upon, and through us into the lives of other people. So to say yes to the colic, to say, to say yes to this preparation, to which we are called is in fact to say the kind of yes that can only some, come from someone who knows that they have nothing before God that, of which they are worthy and yet hunger for the things that only God can give us. Is that process of change comfortable? Not always. I can imagine Philemon Winston <laughs> as he's reading that little letter from Paul. And yet, Paul spoke the truth to him. And once he heard the truth, he could never say he never heard. The same is true for us. It's a the only thing that is asked of us is that we just keep saying yes. Even if it's yes, oh, no. <laughs> and then, yeah, I guess so, I'm sorry for that, Lord. <laughs> He will carry us and give us the things because what he is after, what he wants to work in us is the purified even as he is pure. It's his work and he will do it. Amen. Amen. Amen.